and sisters. This is Dr. William Snubman coming to you from With One Accord Church Ministries with a got warning and a prayer request uh, that we need to have you prayer warriors just go out there and be armed to the teeth with your swords and your shields and the full armor of Elohim to come against this new threat. It seems like, you know, every week almost some new bizarre thing is going on in the culture, in the country, whatever. And we need to pray more. And I don't want to belabor that point right now, but right now we are seeing in so many ways our children coming under attack in this country and in most of the Western world, in fact, whether through diseases, whether through propaganda, media stuff, schools, you name it. And I want to start out by reading this passage from uh, Matthew chapter 18, starting in verse 2. And Yeshua called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, and when he says that kind of thing, he means this is really important. Listen, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall humble himself as his little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him than a millstone were hanged around his neck, and that he were drowned <clears throat> in the depths of the sea. So, that's tough. It's beautiful at first, but it's, it's tough at the end because Yeshua loved little children, and so should we. He wanted to protect them, and so should we. And yet, more and more things are coming at our, our young people our, and our, our, you know, even little children. And, you know, as you probably know we're in title, we're going to, that we had at the beginning, we're going to be talking about Disney again. Um, you know, parents used to trust Disney. It was, it was thought of to be this place where you could, whether it was the theme parks or the TV or the movies, something that you could go and have innocent family fun. Well, I've done a couple of radio shows and things over the years where I kind of unpacked the whole problem with Disney from the beginning, almost in the very beginning. And I'm not going to get into a lot of it here, but just to say that even way back in the 30s and in the 40s, there were elements at work in Disney's, you know, output of, of cartoons and movies and such that were not good. And he was funded by the black nobility, which is kind of the Italian branch of the um, the Brotherhood, the Illuminati, whatever, you know, weird word you want to use. And he was basically told to, to produce these movies that were like, you know, about various famous fairy tales, you know, Snow White and so on, and just subtly change them to remove some of the Christian content from them. So even though it was, you know, it was said that Disney was a Methodist and wonderful guy and blah, 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 but yet a lot of his material, even in the beginning, promoted magic and promoted witchcraft and, you know, all of these kind of things. And of course, things got worse after his departure and I want to say this just parenthetically. I was a huge fan of, of Disney growing up. In fact, the first time I can ever remember crying is when I heard that he had died, which I think was like around Christmas of 67 or 68. Anyway, he meant a lot to me. And I, I don't think I missed one single Disney movie as a little child. And, you know... But in all of these things, there are, there are subtle things that open up a child's mind and directions that, you know, the Bible says they shouldn't be going. And let me just tell you my personal story. You probably heard this if you've been following me for a long time, but I was probably 10 or 11 years old, and they were marketing this movie that he had come out with called Darby O'Gill and the Little People about leprechauns. 
and really, if you look at it, uh, the movie has some remarkable special effects for being, you know, 50 or 60 years old now. Um, but I was watching, they were promoting it on his TV show, The Wonderful World of Disney. I was watching it with my mother. And they had this scene in the movie, which they featured in this, this TV broadcast, of this banshee supposedly coming to... Um, take the soul of this person who was going to die. It's an Irish thing. <clears throat> and anyway, it was terrifying. Even on a little black and white TV, it was terrifying. The sounds were terrifying. The imagery was terrifying. And that thing haunted me for months. I had nightmares about it. Because, you you know, when we tuned in, I know, you know, my mother, neither her nor I, had any idea that we were going to be seeing something that should be in a horror movie. And I know now from my spiritual understanding over the decades that that opened the doorway. It opened up my life for a spirit of fear and probably, coupled with some of my Irish heritage, a curiosity for the occult, for the otherworldly, because you know, that the whole basis of that film was that kind of thing. And more and more occult stuff creeps into Disney the further along you go. And, you know, and of course, more recently in the last five years or so, it's been this whole homosexual thing, um, all kinds of stuff. And of course, you know, there have even been countless accusations of pedophilia taking place in Disneyland, which is in the West Coast, and, and Disney World, which is, of course, in Florida. It's, it's just a totally unwholesome situation. And, you know, we actually have had to minister to young people and adults that were sexually molested in Disneyland. That That is their testimony and testimony of their parents. So take that for whatever it's worth. In any event, <clears throat> just when you thought things can get much more bizarre. There's this, this announcement put forth that Disney Plus, which is their streaming service and apparently is not doing well, is producing or going to produce this film called, or I think it's a series called Pauline. And it's about a, a teenage girl, 18 years old, who has a one night stand with Satan. And they had, she conceives a child from that fornication. And that's the premise of the show. Now, you imagine Disney putting out a movie about a girl having sex with a devil? I mean, that's about as far away from, you know, 101 Dalmatians or Lady and the Tramp as you can possibly get. And yet here it is. And I guess the, there's two, I think they're German... Um, uh, directors, writers, whatever that conceived this idea and are trying to produce it and bring it to the to the streaming service, and they say, "Oh, it's what do they say? It's a it's a coming of age love story," and they say that this project has been dear to their hearts for years to make a movie about a girl having a one night stand with the devil. I'd hate to see what's in their hearts because it's probably not pretty. But in any event, this, and I guess, you know, obviously I haven't seen it. I mean, nobody outside the industry has seen it. But the devil is portrayed as a very romantic, handsome figure. You know, no warts or pitchforks or horns or anything like that. And, you know, this is awful. This is just awful. <clears throat> and, you know, it's like, it's not like this is anything new. That what is new is that it's being injected into a major brand, which has been for literally more than a half century associated with wholesome family entertainment. And you know, but this there's nothing new about this. In one way or another, this has been going on since the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But the devil has been trying to conceive monstrous children with human women for thousands of years. And to a degree, there have been many, many times that this has happened. 
And, you know, if you read Genesis 6, and some of you, this is maybe old news to you, but some of it may be new. <clears throat> this is talking about before the flood. It says that um, in verse 2 of Genesis 6, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all that they chose. And if skipping to verse 4, and there were giants in the earth also in those days, pardon me, in the earth and in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare them children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, that basically was the reason for the flood. The generalized wickedness of humanity but most especially because these fallen celestial beings were coming down to earth, you know, either marrying or seducing or even raping human women and producing offspring of various degrees of monstrosity. Giants, super beings, you know, demigods. And it's interesting to note that most of the cultures the pagan cultures around Mediterranean area have this idea of demigods, like Hercules is the best known one, uh, whose father was Zeus and whose mother was a human woman. And there's somebody like that in almost every every one of these pagan cultures. So it's a it's a very common theme. And <clears throat> the devil has been trying to do this. He and he has been producing these monstrous entities for probably hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's getting worse because you know what Yeshua said in Matthew 24, 37. He warned, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So we are now in the last days. I don't think anybody would deny that. And we're seeing the same thing that was happening in the days of Noah. The sons of God, which are fallen angels, are having sex with human women. And, you know, that's that. And the funny thing is, I would be willing to lay you good money if I was a gambler, which I'm not, that you're seeing some of these Nephilim-like beings on the TV every night. You know, these, some of these movers and shakers, you know, whether they're in Hollywood or whether they're in politics or whether they're in these like World Economic Forum type, they call them non-GOs, non-governmental organizations, even though they're basically running the world. I think a lot of these people are the children of <clears throat> fallen angelic beings by human women. And of course, they aren't going to admit that. But And so this is all, this, this TV show is a reflection of that. And, you know, this is this is happening. It's not it's not fiction, and they're glamorizing it. Disney Plus is they're glamorizing it. Rosemary's Baby has been coming true, and is coming true. And I know I'm dating myself for that movie, but most people know what it's about. It's about a a young, relatively innocent wife who is seduced by her husband into having sex with the devil to produce you know, the great beast, the Antichrist. This was made back in 1966, I think. And the funny thing is, when I was in Satanism, because I know most of you understand that I was in, involved in hardcore Satanism, among many other weird things, you know, I was told that in 1966, on June 6th of 1966, the, the devil had a ceremonial ritual sex with a woman to conceive the Antichrist. And that 30 years later, this was the devil's plan, just like Yeshua started his public ministry at the age of 30, so this guy would do the same thing. Now, of course, that would mean that he would have to start his ministry in 1996. And it didn't happen. Why? Because Christians were alerted and they prayed against it. They did warfare against it. I mean, I was already in the ministry by, you know, 88, 87, 
And I was warning about this stuff, and I was encouraging. I, I was speaking in churches all over the Pacific Northwest and beyond. And I would make a point of encouraging Christian believers that were prayer warriors to pray against this Antichrist figure who was uh, supposedly coming to power, and it didn't happen. And, you know, my sources tell me that they tried it again in 2000. And, of course, here it is, 2023, and... Pfft, another fizzle. Hallelujah. But I do believe some of these people that are walking the earth today, either behind the scenes or in positions of power, are fallen angelic beings. They are antichrists. They may not be the antichrist, but they are definitely antichrists, and we should not listen to them. We should not follow their advice. We should stick to this book into the words of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Okay. In this century, pardon me, in the last century, <laughs> Aleister Crowley, the noted Satanist, wrote a book called The Moon Child. It was a novel. It was a fictionalized account of trying to produce a magical baby. And basically, that's what these people are trying to do um, in various different ways. Uh, through, you know, sex magic, through all kinds of stuff I don't even need to go into. I don't want to make this too long. But to just kind of bring this to a close, understand this too. This isn't just fiction. There are, I am sure, teenage girls that are either seduced or raped by fallen angels all the time in the Western world, probably all over the world. Um, there are little children that are raped, kidnapped, and either they have sex with, you know, these satanic priests or even women priestesses, um, either while drugged or tied up or whatever it might be, rape. And they're, these people are demon-possessed. And, of course, they think that if they have relations with this little child, that demons will go into that child and maybe even that child will conceive a moon child. This is still going on. And it's probably going on more than ever because the internet has made this, this kind of a bondable behavior more accessible. I mean, you can just look it up on, you know, whatever thing you want to look it up on. I mean, the idea of, of satanic ritual abuse, the idea, this is real. I mean, right after I got into the ministry out in, out in Seattle, the police were having to call me in because of missing children, because they'd find these ritual sites that were very obviously, even, even to a police officer that wasn't particularly schooled in, in occult crimes, could tell something creepy had been going on. And I would go there and they'd ask me questions and show me pictures. And yeah, satanic rituals were being done. And of course... Sadly enough, Seattle is a relatively unchurched part of America. There's very few, at least it used to be very few Christians per capita live in the greater Puget Sound area. But, you know, tragic. And this stuff is still going on. And this is in a way, if, they, if these people, these producers, are producing this to make the devil look romantic and exciting and sensuous and handsome and... Yeah, he can be all of those things if he wants to be. He can be an angel of light, Paul tells us. He can be the most handsome guy, and he knows. He knows what young men and young women fantasize about. That each person, you know, has their, their ideal man or their ideal girl. And he'll show up in that form and seduce the living daylights out of these young people. And this kind of junk, this kind of garbage is going to make it easier for him to do that. And they're trying to out Netflix, Netflix. That's what Disney Plus is doing. I think they're, they're seeing their revenues drop for probably a variety of reasons, including the fact that they're producing mostly garbage. I mean, not this kind of garbage, but I mean, just bad entertainment, crappy movies, crappy TV shows. Anyhow, don't get me started. I don't even watch any of this stuff. But, 
you know, I hear stories about how bad these things are, and they're trying to reinvigorate their brand. Well, this ain't going to do it. You know, I would hope that if anybody watching this thing, this video, if they're subscribed, because this is a, a subscription service, I don't know what it costs, you know, 10 or 12 bucks a month, that they would immediately cancel the thing. Your children do not need a digital babysitter. Let me talk about that for a moment. So many kids nowadays have iPads or iPhones or, you know, the Android equivalent thereof. And that's what, you know, I mean, I remember I used to watch Saturday morning cartoons and that was about the extent of it. Now these kids, they have access to this stuff. And even if it's innocent stuff, even if it's, you know, Christian-oriented stuff, uh, media, you know, cartoons, programming, whatever, even if it's innocent, Hear me now. The, the way in which this stuff comes, the packaging, the light from these devices. And I'm gesturing here on my own iPad, which I use for my ministry. But, you know, it's, it's this intense blue light. And especially when you are a little child, male or female, doesn't matter, that having your eyes in that light so much, whether you're watching on a big screen TV or whether you're looking at it on a phone or a tablet or whatever, it changes the young person's brain chemistry. It really does. Those kids should be out playing. They should be out in the sunshine, you know, swinging on a swing or playing ball or, you know, they should be out in daylight because the, the, the sun was made by Elohim so that it would feed our brains when they're growing up. And that's a whole kind of, I hope to do a video about this, but I just wanted to put that in there. I would, if I was a parent, especially of a young child, I would really restrict the amount of time they can spend on these things. I would, you know, if you had to live in an area of the country where you've got winter and all of that, even then, I mean, I used to remember going out in the winter and, you know, playing and making snow forts and doing all that kind of stuff. Don't have your kids be indoors sitting there with their eyes glued to an iPhone or, or whatever. Let them see the sun, let them play, let them have fresh air and really limit the amount of time they can spend on these things. If you, if you, you know, I can't even imagine a parent giving a three-year-old child an iPhone, but I guess some do, or at least they let them use the parent's phone. And be sure every day to pray over your phone, pray over your TV, pray over your, you know, your um, tablet or your laptop or whatever. Because the devil comes through electricity. And I know some people think this is nuts, but I think half the reason we're seeing so much more demonic activity in the last century or so is because we have more and more electricity, especially since the advent of these digital devices. So, okay, that was sort of a sidebar, but I think it's important. So, so just be careful with how much you let your children use these devices, get them active, get them outside playing and things like that. Okay, now we obviously need to pray against this. And and I, as I said, I would definitely encourage flooding Disney Plus with protestations and emails. You know, whether or not it matters, I don't know. I mean, it seems like there's an increasing number of these big, huge, giant corporations that are willing to literally fall on their own sword to promote some weird, you know, woke agenda or satanic agenda or whatever. But make your voices heard. Cancel the darn thing. You don't need to have Disney in your home. You don't need to have Disney in your children's life. Believe me, it's toxic stuff. Even though a lot of the earlier things, you know, like, you know, Old Yeller and, you know, Mary Poppins and all of that is wrapped in a lot of innocent family stuff but there's still little traps in it. So just cancel the thing. And I would really pray against this entire agenda. I would, and again, if you're a, if you're a new Christian, don't, don't try and take this on. But 
there are powerful strong men in in uh, the entertainment industry in hollywood you know wherever else it might be because of course now it's much more scattered all over the world but pray against these things pray against the anti-messiah spirit the you know the antichrist spirit because that's what all these things are promoting they are promoting the antichrist in one form or another and again because the devil is finite he doesn't know the future he can guess he's throwing out all these seeds in the hopes that one of them will bear fruit and by bearing fruit i mean that one of them will be the beast the antichrist but we need to pray against the antichrist spirit the perverse spirit we need to pray against the spirit of confusion because, see, that's what all this transgender, gay stuff is all about, LBGQ, whatever it's called. It's confusion. It's a spirit of confusion. Pray against that. Pray against the perverse spirit. Pray against the spirit of witchcraft. I'm just going to have a list of these as a slide on the screen, but pray against the spirit of whoredoms and pray against the spirit of legion. Because let, let me tell you something. A lot of children who have gone through this, who are now adults, but they have been through the satanic meat grinder. They have the spirit of legion. And a lot of these people, and we've done a whole video on the spirit of legion, so I'm not going to be labeled this, be laborers, but a lot of these people have what psychologists call dissociative identity disorder. They have like more than one personality living within them. That's the spirit of legion. We need to pray against that because a lot of these, you know, these actors and politicians and bigwigs in the, the, you know, they are basically mind-controlled puppets. They're finger puppets for the evil one. And if we come against these things, these six or seven strong men I am suggesting you tackle, it will start unraveling the enemy's plans. Prayer is the most powerful thing we can do. It's so much more powerful than calling or emailing, whether it's your congressman or your TV people, you know, streaming cable service. Yeah, pray. Pray, do warfare, do combat in the heavenly realms because when you... When again, if you're a ser serious, you know, seasoned believer, when you get up there, you will find the angels are there with you fighting, just fighting away with mighty swords and mighty shields and the battle axe of Elohim, the glittering spear of Elohim, and the sword of the Ruach. So you're going to be in good company. So basically, that's what I'm suggesting here. Get off of Disney, write them and let them know why. And also be on your knees and pray for our children. If you have children of your own, I don't care, even if they're 30 years old or 40 years old or whatever, pray for those children more because the enemy is really after your children. He's after you too, for that matter. So more prayer, more warfare. Put on the armor every day. Go forth into the battlefield wherever you work. If you work, if you have a you know, a home type job, put on the armor because the devil's out there. He is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, especially if it's a child. Because I'll just end with this one thought. The only thing the devil loves more than having blood is devouring innocence. That's what he's trying to do with all this teen and, and younger age programming and with, you know, like, whatever you want to call it, LGBTQT, whatever, friendly what underwear and all of that like Target has and so on. He's trying to destroy innocence. He's trying to take away the innocence of your children and all to sexualize them. So just understand that and, and pray that the children of this nation and your children, especially if you have children, that their innocence would be protected the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, would fill them and anoint them 
with the innocence, like Yeshua said in that scripture I said at the beginning, that we all need to become like little children. We all need to have that innocent trust in our Heavenly Father. So, okay, I'm going to pray. Father, please protect our innocent children. Please protect our nation from these monsters of iniquity, from these evil people that are trying to put you know, occultism and perversity in every, every aspect of our entertainment and our culture. Father, we, we, we do regard these people as our enemies. They're enemies of the cross, but we pray for them. As you have commanded us, we pray for our enemies. We pray that you would save these people, get them out of the darkness and put them on the path of righteousness, on the path of the cross of Christ. Let them be saved and be set free, Father, in Yeshua's mighty name. And Father, I also pray that you would just please engage the people that are watching this video. Get them out there on the front lines if they're at that level of spiritual development where they think they can do this. You know, Father, we come against the anti-Messiah spirit, the anti-Christ spirit in the nation, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry. We come against the perverse spirit in Yeshua's name. We come against the spirit of confusion in Yeshua's name. We come against the spirit of witchcraft in Yeshua's mighty name. We come against the spirit of whoredoms in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we come against the spirit of legion in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we declare that these things are defeated foes. They have been nailed to the cross. They have been cast down like the Bible says. And Father, we just pray that you would smash these things into the ground, destroy their power over us, over our families, over the media culture of this country. Set America free from this garbage and just take the sword of the Spirit and the battle axe of Elohim and just cut and smite them hip and thigh with a sword of slaughter. Hallelujah, Father. We know you can do it. Help us, Father, to know how to pray tactically. Help us, Father, to know how, what to do and how to do it to retake our nation for the cross of Christ. And, Father, I just pray that every person who is watching this would feel emboldened, that they would feel empowered and anointed by your Ruach to be able to stand in the evil day, as Paul says in Ephesians 6, and then having done all to stand. Help us to stand against the forces of darkness and hold up the cross of Christ aloft and protect us as we do these things, protect our families as we do these things. And please, Father, give us the guidance of your Rock HaKodesh every step of the way in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Omein. Mimru Omein. Well, hallelujah, folks. Thank you for listening. Again, please, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to our videos, uh, share them, because we, were, we, we really want to get this word out. And we would also, again, pray that you would uh, pray for us, pray for our protection. You know, we're, we feel sometimes we're like in, in the storm at sea, you know, and the waves are hitting us one way, and then they're hitting us in the other way, and then... Hallelujah, we see Yeshua walking on the water towards us and gives us hope. But we need your prayers, and we would appreciate also your financial support. So the various pathways we have that you can use to, um, to support our work, which is the work of Yeshua, is on the screen right now. And I just pray that the Almighty would richly bless you, keep you safe, and above all else, I pray that he would fill you with the joy of the Ruach HaKodesh and the power of the cross of Yeshua HaMashiach everywhere you go, every, everywhere that, everything that you do. Let it be for his glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. Shalom, Shalom.